Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So we're back with kind of part two of probably three parts of me packing up my bookshelves. So I'll leave the link to the first video below, but I talked about how um, we are moving to a different house and I'm losing all my built-in bookshelves, which is so sad. Um, but there'll be more, don't worry, I have plans, I have grand plans um, for another kind of look and feel with bookshelves. So I thought I'd bring you along with me as I go through cleaning up my bookshelves and getting my house ready to go up for sale. So we're not totally packing yet. We don't move for like another two months, but I think this is just a little overwhelming for people and that's okay. Not everybody's like me and it's okay seeing all of their books. So these two shelves are all of the books that I have read. So in theory, I could just put all of them away. Um, but part of me, I love borrowing out my books. So if there's any books that I think somebody may want to still read or I might suggest to people, I think I'll leave those on the shelf. But for the most part, I think I'll put a bunch away. I might leave some of my series out and stuff like that, but we'll just get started and see what happens. So first shelf, this also gives me an opportunity to kind of show you guys what I have on all of my bookshelves. First one I have is Hearing from God Each Morning. This is by Joyce Meyer. This is something my aunt gave me for Christmas in 2011. And I do pull this out um, every so often. Probably should do it a little bit more than I am. I should probably take this upstairs with me because it is a nice little reminder. So every day you have just a one page little snippet um, to kind of help keep faith in the forefront of your mind. So I love that one. Um, I have random stuff as well. So first up I have my Heather Gutenkopf collection. This is an album. Oh, here's Little Mercies because I just talked about it in a video. So I really highly doubt I've, I will loan these out to any more people. I've pretty much, I can't sing her praises enough and I'm pretty sure everybody that I know that would want to read her books has already read them. So I will pack up these. Um, I have The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. Um, I don't know. I feel like I should give this a reread at some point in time because I really did like it. But we'll pack it. Next I have a few of my Leanne Moriarty books. I have The Husband's Secret and Big Little Lies. Again, another book that I think I've given to just about everybody I can think of, so we'll pack those up. Alright, I have the classic Devil Wears Prada, I've got the Nanny Diaries by Emma McClo McClellan and N Nicola Krauss, wow. My Gail Foreman, if I, sh if I stay, I also read the rest of the series of this book, and I have Room by Emma Donahue. I think I might get rid of these two. I just don't have a need to keep them anymore. We have The Book of Ivy by Amy Engel good series, but we'll pass that on. Then of course I have The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay. I have a feeling these might be ones Riley will eventually read, so we'll keep those. Conspiracy of Us by Maggie Hall. I'm going to keep this out because I think I'm going to want to talk people into reading that a little bit more. I have a rose from when we went and saw Beauty and the Beast, the Broadway show. Just all these random things. Walk on Earth, A Stranger. I don't even know where that came from. By Ray Carson. I love this series. I need to like read the second one sooner than later. I have Allegiant and Insurgent by Veronica Roth. I think it's time to part ways with those. I've got Carval by Stephanie Garber. This is one I think I'll try to get people to read. Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. I liked this book. I enjoyed this book, but I have no desire to go on with the series, so why keep it? other than this glorious cover, but I don't need to keep it. Classic. I have all the complete collection, Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. We'll keep those out just because it's pretty. Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Could not stand the book. We're going to get rid of that. Um, Silent Patient by Alex McAlevey's. I'm going to keep this one around because I can't stop talking about it. 
The Huntress by Kate Quinn. Also going to keep that around. Can't stop talking about it. Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris. Maybe I'll keep it just because I have her other one. Jodi Picot, Spark of Light. Of course I'm going to keep that, but I don't think I'll keep them out. I think I'll pack them. I will put this with the other one. Um, Those Girls by Chevy Stevens. Excellent book. If you haven't read this, <gasps> oh, excellent book. Um, and then they have Tumbleweeds and Somerset by Layla Meacham. I need to read Roses this summer. This might be cute to keep out. It Ends With Us by Marik Minshkamp. I can't. Really interesting book about a school shooting. It takes place, like this takes place in the matter of maybe an hour, I think, from beginning to end. Really, really quick read. Read this book. And then Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. Um, this is a retelling of Jane Eyre, like, as the main character is a serial killer. It's good. So, question is, do I want to keep this? I don't think I want to keep it. I feel like it's just one of those. Um, I have the illustrated version of the Da Vinci Code, which was, this was the best way to read this book because you saw what they were talking about. Felt like I was carrying a textbook around, I'm gonna be honest with you, but this was an awesome way to experience this book. But I think I'll keep this out strictly because of the odd size and not fitting into my little Tetris game I'm playing over here in this box. I have my collection of Vince Flynn books. I'm going to put these in the box. Vince Flynn's one of those authors I don't hear a whole lot about. Of, I guess I don't hear a lot of people on booktube talking about him. Um, he has a, a series of books that follows a character, Mitch Rapp, and he is a covert ops or black ops assassin, kind of. He's the one that keeps us safe. So, But I really, really enjoy his books. Here's my other B.A. Paris book. So I have The Breakdown as well as Behind Closed Doors. If I had to rate these in order of which ones I liked and how I liked them, Behind Closed Doors, The Breakdown, and then Bring Me Back. But I think I'll keep them out just because it's a nice little collection. Um, I have Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. I loved this book as well. I still need to read Origin as well. Um, Finally Girls by Riley Sagar. This is one I think I would talk about and get people to read excellent book. And then The Dry by Jane Harper. Again, another really good mystery type book. Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. You know me. I can't stop talking about this book. It's fantastic. I'm going to leave that up. Jeffrey Archer. I have a couple of his in here. He's another um, author that writes a series that follows kind of the same family through through time they're all historical fiction I think we're even on like the next generation at this point um but I've read three of them I there's probably I don't know how many more I'm a little behind but I'm gonna keep them then I have I have a lot of kind of my older books my little house in the prairie book I have this old version of Mrs. Miss yeah Mrs. Mike who's this by I can't even read it Benedict and Nancy Freeman so this is a book that my my great-great-grandfather read. No. My great-grandfather read, my grandmother read, and then gave to me. So I just can't get rid of it, and we're going to keep it nice and safe up here. Then I have two of the, like, readers that my great-grandma, um, this is, these were the readers she used when she went to school. So I have both of those. I have the Bobsy Twins. This was a book that my mom had when she was growing up. I think it even has her name in there. Christmas 1964. And then I have Mitch Albums, Five People Meet in Heaven. This is a great, I love to reread this book. It's a nice little, just quick read. So we're going to keep all of those on the shelf. Now up to here. 
got A Mother's Reckoning by Sue Klebold. I want my mom to read that, so I'm going to leave that one in on the shelf. Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. So good. She just came out with a new book, too, I believe. I believe. I have no rhyme or reason, but I'm going to leave that out, too. Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I feel like I've gotten This Has Got Around. We're going to pack that up. Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy. I'm going to actually get rid of that one. Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. Oh, love this. I actually should read, leave this out because I left Fly Away out. Um, and that's, Fly Away is the second book to Firefly Lane. And I may need to go back to it. I don't know. Maybe. Friends and Other Liars by Kayla Coble. I think I'll get rid of that one. Harry Potter. Um, I'll pack this away because I do have my other Harry Potters over there. Mr. Penumdrum's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan. This was a really enjoyable book as well, but I'm going to pack that away too. I have The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, and Lilac Girls by Martha Hall Ke Kelly. Um, I want to get her new book. What was it called? Like Lost Roses or something? So this is centered around World War II. The one that just came out is centered around World War One, and she's going to do another one that takes place during the Civil War. Like, yeah! I'm super excited for that. And my cat's freaking out. What's the matter? Oh, she doesn't know. So we'll keep these out just because they're pretty. Agatha Christie's and then there were none. I can't get my friends to read that for some reason. I know it's good. Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. We can pack that away. Fabulous book. The Almost Sisters by Jocelyn Jackson. I really liked this book, but no one else in my book club did. I don't know why, but I really enjoyed it. But I think I'm going to get rid of that one. Everything I Never Told You, Celestining. You know my feelings on this. It's going, about, going away. Um, the Selection and Happily Ever After by Kira Cass. Um, I really enjoyed these as well. But I got a free edition of this on my... Kindle, so if I ever really want to go back to it, I could, but I don't see myself ever rereading these, so I'm going to get rid of those as well. Oh. <clears throat> the Castaways by Jessica Fleck. I can see my daughter eventually reading this. I really enjoyed this. This is a fantasy book about a girl who's kind of a castaway. Um, she's kind of picked on. She ends up going into a corn maze to get away from, from some bullies, goes into a specific spot and ends up kind of teleporting to an island where she's kind of trapped for a little bit, but with some other kids. So it was really good. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Oh, so sad by John Bowen, but so good. World War II historical fiction. Another one in the selection series. This is The Air, so we're going to get rid of that. And then I have my Fifty Shades books. I think it's time to part ways. Fact of the Body by Alexandria Marzano Lesnovich. Um, a memoir of her life with how she grew up as well as her, I think she's a, is she a prosecutor or um, a lawyer? She's a child of two lawyers and she is going to school? I don't know. She has to work on a case that is a death row case and it's very interesting. Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance, another one that's super, 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 super interesting. Um, it, he grew up as a hillbilly and talks about kind of his life. Stranger in the Woods by Michael Finkel, again, another really interesting book. This was uh, the story about a hermit who lived in Maine for over 20 years, um, but very, very good books. Just because I don't want an empty shelf, I'm going to put those back up. A Painted House by John Grisham. I really enjoyed this, and it's been a long time since I read it. I should reread it again. We'll pack that. What Alice Forgot by Leanne Moriarty. Another fabulous read. Pack that. Um, On a Gate Hill by Lee Smith. I really, I did enjoy this. Historical fiction kind of reminded me of, like, Gone with the Wind feel to it, but we'll pass that. We'll get rid of that one. Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. It was fine, but I never see myself ever rereading it, so. And then I have all my Jodi Picoult books. I can show you what they are, but I'm not going to pack them. I've got um, between... Where'd the other one go? I didn't pack it, did I? Maybe I did. Oh, well. 
Um, Between the Lines, the one that she wrote with her daughter. Storyteller. This one. And this one, Leaving Time. These are tied for my all-time favorite Jodi Picoult books. And we have Off the Page, her, the book she wrote with her daughter, Small Great Things, and Lone Wolf. So we'll put those back on the shelf. Um, I have Rudy Sapetti, Salt to the Sea, World War II Historical Fiction. And now that I say this, I wonder where my Between Shades of Grey are. I don't know if I have it. We'll see. We'll leave that out. Only Woman in the Room by Marie Benedict. This was very interesting. It was a Barnes & Noble Book Club book um, about a woman who was, was she married to someone pretty high up in the, in the Nazi regime, Nazi party? Yes, yeah, she did marry him. And then ended up kind of escaping and coming to America. I think I'll get rid of that. And then Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Love, 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 love that book. So we'll keep that around. All right, onto the shelf. 